Woodcock. Grab. Got it. Good girl. You got it, Jacob. Good Woo! shot, buddy. Take it off. It never fails when someone new wants to get into grouse hunting. They always ask, where do I begin and what am I looking for? It's more often than not answered with your typical look for 10 to 15 year old timber cuts or you just have to see it. It's easier to show than explain. This past October, we followed up on that statement with a couple of brand new grouse hunters in Andrew Maxwell and Jacob Myers of the Southern Outdoorsman. They wanted to learn, so here they are, 16 plus hours away from home in Alabama doing an actual real hunt with an experienced and enthusiastic rough grouse hunter and Nick Larson of the Bird Shop Podcast. As you join us on this walk, you're going to see an actual grouse hunt, including what to plan or look for when starting your hunt, poor shooting along with good shooting, good dog work along with some poor dog work, exciting grouse flushes with enough woodcock in between to keep everything exciting, but most importantly, you're going to see the habitat and what you should be trying to learn and use to your advantage when you're out on your annual walk in the Northwoods chasing what's often labeled as the king of upland birds, the roughed grouse. All those big oak trees, you're walking under every one of those. That'll pull in grouse sitting under there eating acorns. I love when they just leave a few big mature oaks under the clear cut or over the clear cut. If they leave a big mature tree, that's going to alter how the cover regenerates underneath it, whether it's more sunlight or less sunlight. So it, in theory, it's going to create something different. Yeah. So if it's a white pine or a red pine, even though it's not dropping acorns, I would still treat it as an objective like that. Gotcha. So this is like, this isn't really the main kind of cover we're looking for. No. We're trying to get out of this wind. This is, yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're trying to drop out of the wind. This is huntable cover. But like I said, it's not exactly what we came here to hunt today. Yeah. But we're going to, you can see right here, this is a swamp edge. It gets low right here. We're going to work this on the way back through as well. And they'll, I mean, they'll be in windy areas, but anytime there's wind, that's like, the birds have a much more tendency to jump as soon as they see or hear anything. Yeah. Because they know that their, their senses are reduced yeah. in that wind. This can be productive in here. It's not a place where you would normally would go cut the dog loose, but we're passing through it today. And this is like five year old. I, I would, yeah, four or five year old. Yep, I was. I think I hunted in here right after they cut it, or did this hunt and we came through. And it's it's getting there. There's patches of high ground, and we've moved grouse out here, so the birds are using it. This is just one of those places that, while the birds are here, it's tough on the dogs. It's not a place you want to spend a ton of time. Yeah. All this grass, there's deadfalls and stuff in here. So yeah, we're slipping through it today, but okay, makes sense. We might see some, so we're gonna Get work after. along here. All right, let's Andrew steer this way. Let's move up ahead this way. Got it right over here, guys. Gross. Oh, she had it. Did it get up? It started. It started to move. She kind of moved in on a little bit. I didn't really have a good look. Woodcock. Got it. Got her. I nice shot Andrew. All right, I'm going to move in. Woodcock. Got it. 
Nice shot, Andrew. There could be a grouse hitting out here. I don't see a woodcock. Woodcock, way up there, wow. Step in there, Jacob. That bird could be right there. There it is. Down. Nice. 45. All right, let's one, two, three, try to stay even. She's down this way somewhere. There you go, a little bit more to the right. Woodcock. We're dropping down now into this river valley and as we're getting lower, the soil's changing. Mm -hmm. And you could see that really right when we hit that edge where the spruce trees start. And so like, this is not heavy, heavy clay soil, but it's also not really grainy, fine red sand. This is kind of a mix. And you can see how it comes out on the ground over here, all that color. Oh yeah. We got, you got clover, there's wild strawberry in here. All of that ground vegetation is grouse food mm -hmm. this time of year, especially and like this is kind of the, the type of soil, like within this region, this is the kind of, this is the area I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Get down a little bit lower. You got a point. Yep. Right here. You got it, Jacob. Good Woo! shot, buddy. Hey, get on it, get on it. Good job. Rachel's got it. You got it, Jacob. Good Woo! shot, buddy. Hey, get on it, get on it. Good job. Rachel's got it. Nice shot, Dang. Jacob. Yeah. Dude, that was so cool seeing it too. It's right my stump. Oh, he got a good girl. Now there's your first solo grouse, buddy. Beautiful. You can keep that fan, aren't you? Hell yeah. But first thing many people look for is the band. So in this case, we have a broken band across the tail. It's broken here, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily indicative of a female, but if it were a solid band, you can say with almost 100% certainty that it's a male, but this doesn't guarantee that it's a female. So then we go to the rump feathers, which in this case, we have a very clearly defined single dot on those rump feathers. We've been looking at this kind of the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Single dot means a female, okay. two dots male. So this is a female bird. Nice. And so you want to look underneath, like this one was just underneath one of those conifers. Yeah, so, so we're just we're like to get under this there. This is real young stem density. If a if a dog points a bird, in all likelihood that bird knows the dog is there, so it's sensing pressure. Mm -hmm. So the bird's going to go somewhere where it feels safe and can plan its next move. In this case, little island of conifers. That bird might have been out here feeding. Could have been out here on hazelbrush looking for strawberry leaves. That's kind of all over. This is the stuff that you don't you don't really know exactly what happened. But it would not surprise me if that bird skittered over into these conifers and the way we came up, mm -hmm. Jacob had eyes eyes on the ground, spotted it there. It's not super dense cover and bird flush your way. Yeah. So yeah, that's you want to look for kind of what stands out, what's unusual. And if you see green trees, conifers like that, when you got a when you're approaching a point, it's it's pretty likely the birds have moved over to that because they can they know they can flush out the other side. Yeah. Yep.
could be a running grouse here. Bird, grouse, took off, it was up ahead. Dang, dude. So what is that right there? Well, so we, so we just had a dog on point and eventually flushed a grouse. We didn't go far enough ahead. It's real windy today. The bird ran up ahead of Rachel and was up there. So now we're coming back through to kind of get back on course, but I'm looking at the surroundings, wondering eh, why was that grouse here? And the evidence is right here. So we've got uh, all around Andrew and I here. This is hazel. So you got hazel catkins right here. That's a, a preferred grouse food, especially this time of year. Right here, we've got a young hawthorn, thorn apple tree. There's an apple up there, a couple apples up there. And as you look up into the canopy, we can see the pink stem clusters of gray dogwood, which is very common to find thorn apple and dogwood together like that. They, they grow in the same areas. And there's no berries on the dogwood. They tend to lose their berries early, I feel like, and drop. But there's a lot of food in here. And it's, not, it it's not an accident. We just put up a grouse in here. And so is this another example of, you know, he was probably feeding right here and then walked up into those conifers for cover? He, he ran ahead of the dog, I'm, I'm sure, because he was, if you notice where he flushed from, he was up in a tangle of brush there. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing they're going to look for when they're feeling the pressure of the dog. He was way up there. Yeah. And if we would have kept walking, we might have put him up and got a shot, but mm -hmm. it's tough. You never know where they're going to be out in this stuff. That's what makes grouse hunting grouse hunting. But there's what we got wild strawberry and clover all over the ground here. I mean, he's got everything he needs right here. And yeah, he's still out here. Hey, when, when she went on point, you said it looks grousey. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, woodcock. I should have shot. Almost. Almost. Not used to shooting at woodcock in the pine tree. In the pines. Woodcock! Oh, safety? Yeah. No shot. Man. Stay with her. Grouse. Got it. Grouse. That a girl, Rach. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl, Rachel. Oh, that is that is something else right there. Yeah. Good girl. Is this kind of like what you were talking to me about earlier where we have, uh, we have some ground cover, we got a big oak tree amongst the young stuff, and then we also have some of these little conifers. Little conifer, yep, which there's not a ton of them in here. I mean, it's funny, but yeah, we saw, I, I happened to see Rachel hit point there. And as we came up here, this, this cover all looks fairly similar, but that oak tree right there with that broken branch coming down, Yep. anytime you see something like that, that's a place where the girls know that's horizontal cover, that's a place where they can pull up. Okay. And I don't think it was right there, but we, we basically flanked that objective perfectly, came right up past it. We had, we were on both sides of Rachel there, and the grouse actually was up ahead, probably moved a little bit, flush left to right. Mm -hmm. You and I both shot at exactly the same time. Yeah. Or yeah. came down. So they like that horizontal cover, so you're looking for... Almost like a little like tent structure, quote unquote, yep. off of like either these conifers or those bigger trees. Yep. They just kind of, I guess they back up into that. That's kind of their first instinct is to get somewhere where they've got some overhead cover, somewhere they can hold up and basically assess what's going on. The, the bird feels the pressure from the dog and then we start coming in. And so you're, as you're approaching the dog on point, this is the beauty of the pointing dog. You've got a heads up that there could be a bird in the area. I'm scanning for those types of things, deadfall, because trying to we need to give ourselves every advantage we can as a shooter out here so yeah. i'm trying to find out where i think that grouse is hidden okay and 
had my eyes on that. It was a little further up, but we got a good look in here. Yeah. It's kind of, it's everything, it holds true. Like, that's your woodsmanship, I guess. Yeah. It, that holds true for deer, too. The cover, food, water thing, and everything being in close proximity, or, or turkeys, or just like anything that you're hunting. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool. You're like, observing all it. that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You gotta always be looking, always be asking why. Absolutely, yeah. There are common threads from hunt to hunt, but you have to be intentional and paying attention to learn them. It's up to you on how serious and disciplined you wanna get when it comes to your own hunting. You put your own expectations and requirements on your hunt. Whether you decide you're gonna only shoot birds handled properly by the dog, or you're okay with shooting mishandled birds. Whether you wanna bust brush or stick to the roads for easier walking. There's a million different ways you can structure your hunt, but the common threads of success and failure are there whether you want to acknowledge them or not. No matter the self-imposed requirements, to be successful, you have to remain a student. Always be asking the questions, when, where, why. Always try to figure out why a bird was in a certain area or why you were successful today, but not yesterday. This should all be a part of the process to consider yourself not only a grouse hunter, but a hunter in general. As Norman McLean once wrote in A River Runs Through It, nobody who didn't know how to fish would be allowed to disgrace a fish by catching him. This should ring true in hunting as well. Luck is great to have. Knowledge is even better and something you can apply to all future walks. Ultimately, there's only one word that encompasses all of this, woodsmanship. Woodsmanship is what allows us to pay attention to, learn, and try to retain the information that invokes an appropriate level of respect and passion for these birds that will always keep us looking forward to October days in the grouse woods.